thanks for watching you can do it today we're going to install a sump pump it's a pro flow and we're going to be putting it right down here in this 24 inch drain box so stay tuned and we'll show you how you can do this so as you can see we've got an inch and a half pipe this is the discharge pipe it's running through the foundation going to the outside um, it's plastic lined and it's got perforated holes down on the bottom um, we cleaned it fairly well there was some sludge down on the bottom we took that out and we've got some perforated pipe that runs up along the foundation here and then it runs back this direction all the drain rock it's one inch drain rock so if water does come in here it'll run underneath there there's plastic there wasn't a video for that install but as you can see this drain box um, it's installed at the lowest part of the foundation under the house so when the water drains it all would pool up into this area right here so we're going to go ahead and unbox the pump and we'll show you how it's going to hook up in this drain sump can all right here we go it's a profo pf92341 it's cast iron and this is a real heavy duty one we got this at ferguson's so let's go ahead and get this open So we got the the float. This is your float. It's a float switch on off. And we've got a inch and a this looks like inch and a half. Uh, it's for inch and a half pipe. So we have a pipe that's already made up. We're gonna show you how that installs to the pump. Okay, so we've got our riser here. It's all made up. We have an inch and a half male adapter, an inch and a half pipe here going to a check valve. It's an inch and a half check valve. You want to make sure the arrow of the flow of water is pointed in the direction of the flow of water going outside the house. You don't want to have this when you glue it together. Make sure that the arrow is pointing up. And then we've got an elbow. And then we have a rubber coupling here with some strap bands. It's pretty basic. Um, the check valve um, doesn't allow, once it pumps up, it won't go past the water. Once it goes up into the elbow here, it will not flow back down into the drain basin into the pump. So any water that flows past this cannot come back down. So that's what this is for. Um, we're going to go ahead and install this onto the pump and then put it in the drain sump. All right, so here we are. We've got it installed on the pump. We've got it screwed in to the threads there. This is what it looks like. Your application may be a, dip, a bit different if you're using a different pump as far as the length of your pipe, how tall it is, and the length of your piece of pipe connecting up to the discharge pipe going through the drain box and I'll show you what that looks like so let's go ahead and take this thing down to the down to the sump hole so your drain basin so here's the drain basin we're gonna go ahead and drop it in so you can kind of see it's up against the back side of the drain basin uh, just enough to where I can slide that rubber coupling onto the pipe that's going to the outside and that's where the water is going to exit and go out 
into a drain that we have on the outside. So we're going to go ahead and connect this up and then we're going to fill it up with some water and test it out. Now you'll notice on the pump there's two cords. This this cord here that has the male and then the female connector on it, that's your float switch. That plugs into the receptacle first, then the pump cord. So the pump cord plugs into here, and when the float switch activates, it turns on the pump. So this is your sequence when you go to plug it in, because some folks, they look at the cords and they're like, why do I have two cords? And the other thing too is, if you wanted to put a float alarm and install it, that would go um, in between the two cords. So you could actually install that as well. So if the, if the pump doesn't kick on, there's another float that goes in the tank. And when it reaches a certain level, it triggers the alarm to go off, letting the person know that the pump failed. So this is how you do it, and this is how it plugs in. Obviously, you'd want to plug it into a GFI. This isn't the permanent install here. I'm just showing you in this video that this is how you would plug it in into a GFI. And there you have it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and tape these wires up here to the pipe just to kind of keep them up out of the way. so they don't get in the way of the float because you don't want them to be just dangling up mm -hmm. coiled up down on the bottom because if they get tangled around the float to where it can't go up with the rise of the water it won't activate the pump to kick on so I'm going to keep sh keep these wires these cables out of the way just a little bit of tape you can use zip ties that works too. I just, I'm going to use some tape here. All right. So let's drop it in here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Good. Tighten them up here. These clamps take a five. 16th nut driver or you can use a flathead. I like a nut driver because you can really torque them. Alright, and that's it. Alright, here we go. We're all connected. The basin, we cleaned out most of the dirt. You can see down on the bottom there's some holes down there where the water can seep out the bottom um, and then also it can come in from down there as well here's the pipes coming in from the side we didn't install this box but it looks like it was done uh, pretty nicely so um, we're gonna go ahead and put water in here and we'll test the pump and make sure that everything works properly before we leave the job.